Okay, so one of these important genes, that one of these important human cellular genes that was identified from a viral genome was the RAS gene. Okay, and turns out if you look for this, now that you know what you're looking for, if you look for this RAS sequence in human um, cancers, you often find that this RAS sequence is mutated. So it, this led to our understanding of how a normal cellular gene can be mutated. So in the absence of viruses, this gene happens to pick up a mutation in a normal cell, and when the, this normal gene gets mutated, it causes problems. Okay, so what is the RAS gene? Um, it was one of the first gene sequences to be sequenced. And it turned out it was a, you know, they, they managed to sequence 350 base pairs of this gene and then look at the, and the, do some sequence analysis. And what they identified, that, which was really exciting when they did this, they were able to identify a single base pair substitution, a single point mutation in the RAS sequence. And this single base pair change was enough to convert this normal cellular gene into an oncogene. So the normal cellular process had been perturbed by this point mutation. So a single base pair replacement um, appeared to be all that was required in this gene to um, make it contribute to the progression of cancer. So, so here we have um, the first exon of the human RAS gene. So it starts with um, ATG, there's the first methionine of the sequence. So this is the start of the um, first exon. And if you count 12 exon, 12 codons in, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? 12, the 12th codon, okay? The um, normal gene, so we call it a proto, meaning a prototype, an early version. So the prototype of this oncogene, so this proto-oncogene, which is the RAS gene in this case, this proto-oncogene normally has a GGC sequence here, and it codes for glycine. A point mutation converts the GGC into GTC, so a G to T transformation. This single base pair change changes the codon Instead of coding for a small um, side chain, which is just a hydrogen residue with the glycine, it changes that amino acid residue into a valine, big bulky um, methyl groups. Okay, so it changes the conformation of the protein significantly because it inserts this large bulky group, which changes the function of the protein. And then um, that single change um, makes the RAS gene hyperactive. So this was the first time that um, a single mutation was discovered in a gene that causally contributed to cancer formation. So it's a huge discovery in, and a huge change in the way that we understood how cancers were formed. And an, another important um, part of this story is that this genetic change occurs through a normal som somatic mutation during an adult lifetime. So our genomes are constantly being picking up mutations during our adult lives, and we build up a, a large burden of mutations in our somatic cells. That's just normal. Now we've got, you know, 300 billion base pairs of DNA, so it's very rare that you're gonna pick up a particular mutation in one of these particular genes. But when that does happen in a cell, then it gives that cell a growth advantage. So recall we talked about this multi-hit hypothesis. You get these multiple hits in a single cell over many years that drive that cell to become carcin carcinogenic or become tumor-like. Okay, One of those hits is often a mutation to the RAS gene. It's very unlikely, but we've got so many cells in the body and we've got a low rate of mutation in all of these cells that if you do the maths, there's a chance that it will happen during an adult lifetime. So understanding this, this RAS point mutation established a mechanism now where we can understand how oncogenes become activated. Okay, So um, within a decade of discovering the RAS mutation, um, a large number of other 
um, human tum tumors were found to carry the same mutation in those cells. So you get a patient, you take a tumor sample from that patient, you sequence the RAS gene, you look at the RAS gene sequence, and you see that mutation at the 12th codon. All right, so all the cells around the tumor have the normal sequence, but you get into that tumor sample and you sequence that, and it's got the mutation. So it's a normal somatic mutation that's driving the, the process of cancer formation. Um, so it turns out that there are three specific codons in RAS that are very important to control RAS function. So we've talked about the mutation at the 12th codon. Turns out that the 61st codon and sometimes the 13th codon are also important in looking at the function of RAS. So you've got these codons separated by many tens of residues, but remember the protein folds around and these, these residues that are separate on the primary sequence come into close proximity in the folded sequence, okay, in the folded structure. So these residues tend to be quite close together in the folded structure, even though they're separated on the primary structure. And um, when you look at um, human tumors, it turns out that about 20% of all human tumors tend to have uh, mutations in the RAS gene. So RAS, the RAS protein is one of those key important proteins that's vital to controlling normal cellular growth. So this is just emphasizing what I've just told you, that if you take tumor samples from pancreas, thyroid, colorectal, a whole bunch of these different cancers here, Within these <clears throat> tumor types, the proportion of um, patients who have mutations in the RAS gene is up to 90% of, of patients who have pancreatic cancer have mutated RAS, down through to bladder and, and kidney, where approximately 10% of patients have mutations in RAS. So <clears throat> remember we talked about this idea that different types of cancers have different players that are involved, the different hits on the genome are involved. Well, RAS is one of these important hits. It's more important in some cancers than in others, but it's one of the key players which is generally looked at and generally found to be mutated.